reveal it later. He's a corporate governance expert and a lecturer <laughs> and a lawyer, and he works at the Gimbal Law Faculty. Doc, what was that? Is it James? Yes. Oh, James. Yeah, I still keep it. Okay. But no double identity. Oh, I hope uh, Honorable Abdullah is not listening. Charlie, the Maoris have dragged me to 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 to, to shred for the Maoris. The Maoris is everywhere. It's everywhere. I like it, man. <laughs> Doc, and Bernardo Drotechi. I don't know whether you have other names. Oh, what does your passport say? Bernardo Drotechi. <laughs> Okay, all right. This how many, one is how many passports do you have? One. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uniformity in identity. Everywhere. Uh, but uh, this straight points land from Doc. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know you to a child at the Yesterday, there was a chess service from, uh, is it uh, Prophet uh, Isaac Kosub and Pareven, right? Oh, yeah. okay. All right. And when he was being introduced by his uh, MC. Uh-huh. The guy said that for this man of God, he has only one identity. Yay! <laughs> but one thing is that, one thing people forget is that in case I'm called uh, Koku Mensa, uh -huh. and I decide to have a change of name, yeah. I swear the affidavit, uh -huh. I go to the gazetting process, uh -huh. get it published okay. in one of the dailies. Mm -hmm. It states that all my former documents remain. still remain valid. Okay. The matter is before Shraj, okay. so we cannot go into it. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> These are contentious matters. But can I have two passports into both names? And can two I use passports? Both? No. I can't. You can't. No. Yes. You see, you can have several names, but one identity. Okay. Because Kadir is how it goes. When you get to point of entry at immigration, mm. and they put your finger, presumably you, if you are possessing, you are entering a country that requires no visa, it's a free country, mm. That goes with only your passport, mm -hmm. and you enter. But if you secured a visa mm -hmm. to enter any other country, they need to put your fingerprint on the screen mm -hmm. to authenticate the validity of the visa. Mm -hmm. In that situation, you need to have one, one identity. So two identity matters or shred and legality. I won't go there. <laughs> but say, no, no, no for immigration. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Uh, we started even before we started. <laughs> but uh, you know that even in the process of acquiring a passport, mm -hmm. There's also a session mm -hmm. for previous names. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. So just leave it there. Yes. The matter is before the court. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the court of Shraj. Is it court or is it Shraj as well? No, no. If but Shraj is, of course, If, if Shraj said they yeah. have the powers of a high court. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's a court. It's a court. Okay. Yeah. If they can convict you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But, but, but whatever but, the case, they can also refer it. For, for criminal prosecution, okay. because they are purely in charge of admi uh, 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 administrative justice, so they can recommend to the higher court for prosecution okay. if there's any criminal culpability or whatever. But right. Doc, Doc also know we can have Obita do some passing comment. Mm -hmm. In as much as the Shraj is doing its original job mm -hmm. as panelists here, mm -hmm. we can have passing comments. <laughs> Stray bullet. Uh, <laughs> but make sure those passing comments do not become content of <laughs> All right. Let's take a look. To, uh, first of all, I need to know what's on your mind. Gentlemen. Yes. I saw you, Bernard. Three things, right? Mm -hmm. I got a chance to review the recent Auditor General reports mm -hmm. on the COVID-19 expenditure for the period March 2020 to June 2022. Mm -hmm. And it is revealing. I will encourage every lover of the states to get a copy of the auditor general report that is not like my report it's auditor general report mm. from the state mm. the next one is a uh, government has unilateral rule over cocoa bills yes for additional 182 days mm. and the last of it all is the impact of yield levy on you start entrepreneurship projects mm -hmm. i mean these are my three runs okay now the first one is about the auditor general report let me comment the current Auditor General of Ghana, Mr. Johnson, Ekua Mwas, Asidu. Everybody need to salute that man. When Dom Levo was asked out of office, some of us thought that he gone with the spirit. But anybody who gets a copy of this report and read must have hope in Ghana. I thought because the government appointed him, he was going to do a shoddy job, mm. a floppy one. Mm. But then if you take time to read all the 119 reports and if government to be committed through public account committee will be committed and the attorney general government can recover not less than close to three billion ghana city i have taken the pain to read the entire document 119 pages and calf ghana has a lot of money 
Let me take you to paragraph 15 of the report. And it says that the infractions represent either losses that had been incurred by the state through lack of adherence to public financial management laws by public officers or saving that could have been made if public officials and institutions had observed the public financial management law by their decisions and actions. So losses were incurred. And according to this report, not my report, losses that were incurred is over 3 billion new Ghana CD. Because there is no chicken money. That's a lot of money, man. I'm telling you, look, we are running to IMF begging for $3 billion. According to this report, government was able to mobilize $21 billion at the end of June 2022. If you convert $21 billion to dollar, that is around $1.6, $1.7 billion. Calf, we are begging IMF through stiffer terms and conditions only for $3 billion. But in this report, money that went through the drain, unaccounted for losses, willful losses, meaning people intentionally created a system to... Let me take you to paragraph 34 of the same report. It said that we noted that the Ministry of Health, on behalf of government of Ghana, paid an amount of $120 million to UNICEF and Avad for supply of vaccines. However, 5.1 million doses of vaccines valued at $38 million were supplied to the National Courtroom, leaving a difference of $81 million. Mm. Yes, <laughs> with Avat, we recommend that the Chief Director of the Ministry of Health should renegotiate with UNICEF and AVA to recover the outstanding amount. When is the date of this report? There is uh, 30 December 2022. Recent report in the market. And I'll urge everybody, the media, CSO, get a copy and read. And this covers which period? P that is from uh, March 2020 to June 2022. Current Auditor General report. Mm. Calf, if you if you convert eighty one million dollar to new Ghana CD, you are talking about eight hundred and ten million new Ghana CD, over close to one billion, mm -hmm. and this money has been paid to an outsider, and they didn't supply the vaccines. Wow! And we are chasing IMF for three billion dollar. Are we not sick as a country? You know, some people are doing the wrong thing. That's all. We have to catch them. Look. Calf, let us give this man an award. Mm. This, what is the name? Uh, Johnson Ekua Mwasiedu. Does he have powers of arrest? Uh, he only recommend To who? And search to pack Public Account Committee uh, Attorney General. Okay. So having done his job. Yes, he's done his work. This report will then go to Public Account Committee mm -hmm. for further scrutiny. Should Public Account Committee validate the content of this report, then the Attorney General of the Government of Ghana will start prosecution. Does he have the will? He'll do it. Calf, I am more concerned about recovery than prosecution. Yeah, get the money. You can prosecute people, they can end up in jail and still come back and squander the money. Mm. Calf, let me even situate the law Ministry of Health. If we can recover 81 million dollars, and today the dollar is around 11 CD, 12 CD, multiply 12 CD by 81 million dollars. It's almost... Uh, get into 1 billion Ghana CD. Yeah, exactly. So this 1 billion Ghana CD, have been paid to an outsider, not even a Ghanaian company. And in this report, all they said is that, go recover the money. Cap, if government of Ghana is watching me this morning, we don't need IMF. We don't. Because this report alone tells me that Ghana has money. Cap, let me take you to paragraph 36. I'm ending on that. Government of Ghana and Voter Region acquired a facility for the purpose of COVID treatment and incurred willful losses, 20 million Ghana CD. It is in the report, paragraph 36. Let me take you to paragraph 54 and I end on the report. And I want to add every Ghanaian to get, you see, payment to airlines. Government of Ghana paid money to airlines. And you know we have, look, if you get a time to travel a lot and you use some airlines, you vomit, but they are in operation. If you take Angolan airline, it's like a trot in Ghana. People are boarding. Why can't you bring back Ghana Airways? And look, he said, we observed the Minister of Finance in 2020 paid a total of 8.9 million Ghana CD2. United Arab Emirates Airline and Chukran Airline for evacuation of Ghana from Blab. We reviewed the expenditure and confirmed payment. My argument is that 
if you are paying money to international airline owned by other countries, why can't you revive your own? Look, this report ought to be given some biting space by the government of Ghana. If for nothing at all, COVID gave us money. And when the money came, if you read the entire 119 page report, you cry for this country. I'm begging the president today. I know it's, is he up, you know, outside the country? Well, he, he went off to UAE and okay. then I think he continued to the UK. If he returns to Ghana, he should get a copy and read and implement religiously the content of this report. You printed this yourself. Myself, I printed it myself. You, you invest a lot in, in, yes, in, I in do. documents. I do. Yes, I do. I must admire you. I always yes, see these documents. Because them. I don't want to get into defamation. Mm -hmm. So I want to say what it is. This is public document. Mm -hmm. And for my concern alone, government should recover the $81 million paid to foreign companies and vaccines were not supplied. Carl, do you know today UK people are demonstrating because the FISA vaccines is having some effect on them? Mm -hmm. The so the Pfizer vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine. Mm -hmm. a, a negative effect on them. So, Mr. President, when you come back to Ghana, get a copy and read. And most importantly, let the Minister of Health begin to work. Next one is a uh, cocoa bills. You know, in October 30th. Yes, and I don't printed. In October 30th, government, the president said that there will be no haircut for short-term instrument. True or false? True. Good. Last Wednesday, people bought cocoa. Cocoa bills is a short-term instrument to invest in the cocoa sector. So you, calf myself, anybody can buy cocoa bills. It's a treasure bill kind of. Mm. But they've renamed it like cocoa bills. Okay. Now, when they bought the bill, it was from July to January, maybe 182-day investment. Six months. Yeah. Six months. So government said, that, okay, as soon as it matures, I'll pay you a principal and your interest. No rollover. Okay. As soon as it matured the last week, Wednesday, government unilaterally rolled it over without the consent of the, the, the investors. The implication is that people are beginning to move their money away from Ghana to Cote d'Ivoire. If you go to Cote d'Ivoire today, they are building the biggest cocoa processing center in Africa. $100 million investment. Mr. President, you see, you are making us, some of us, not to trust your words. In your own speech read 30th October 2022, paragraph 3, page 8, you said there will be no haircuts on short-term instruments. People bought cocoa bills for 182 days. They were expecting their money last week, Thursday, only to get to bank for their account to be debited. Meaning that government has rolled it over both the principal and the interest. Is that legal? The law person is here. He will take the legal aspect. I'm taking the economic aspect of the argument. Why are you dragging him into your rant? <laughs> <laughs> he will take a legal bite. <laughs> if, he wants, if he wants to. If he wants to. <laughs> what, 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 what I know is that uh, in case you have any contract with anybody, right? remember even contract, any contract that you enter into in this country mm. is really, also regulated by law. Right. That's the Contract Act of 25 mm. of 1963. So any contract that you enter into, you cannot just do what you want. Mm. All contractual relationships are governed and they're regulated by the Contract Act. Mm. So if you operate outside that, you'll be in breach of the law. All right. yeah. I've not seen the details, but what Thank I know you. is that in case you enter any contractual relationship with any party, yeah, you, uh, there are also what we call variation clauses. Mm. You put clauses to the extent that, well, in case of uh, whatever situation, we can vary this contract based on ABC. So you need to see the contract. Mm. You need to see the contract okay. and then you can vary it as sure. and when it becomes this. Right. When it is in conformity with the variation clauses that you've included in that contract. Right. That's <laughs> Seth, the lawyer. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So, but you see, Cal, there's one thing I know. No politics here. It's <laughs> just law. Pure 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 law. <laughs> one thing Leonardo. I know yes, is that we have conditioned President conditions subsequent mm. that it ought to comply. Mm. But in contract law, Obama Feda is key, utmost good fit. Yeah. Do unto others as we expect to do unto you. If government has paid people to invest in the country, you might not put in place tumbling blocks that will kill investor confidence. For me, if I'm either domestic or external investor and the government does this, what it tells me is that if I get money tomorrow, I would prefer to go to other jurisdictions than to come to Ghana. Probably, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, South Africa, Botswana would have a better terms and conditions. The variation clauses could be there. 
But for me to invest my money, expecting my maturity to arrive, it has arrived. I work to a bank only for my account to be debited. That to me is unfair. There's something called contra pro frontum rule. Who says that if a drafter of an agreement, original draft of an agreement, and there is a controversy, and it is it's injurious to the other party, it must be misconstrued against the original drafter. So in this situation, if government draft even the whole terms of the contract, and another party feel that it is injurious to my economy being, matters of law say that the contra pro frontum say that. Construe it again, the one who drafted the agreement. What are you expecting to hear uh, as a result of this action that was taken with the law? It will affect the cocoa industry. Who should be speaking about? Who should, who should be justifying this? Who should, who cocoa should, be, should be speaking to this matter. Mm. And I think that if your production can do what's good, let them try reach out to cocoa board. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? The cocoa industry contributes a lot to the agriculture sector. So if you put up some of these tumbling blood, then you are telling these investors that tomorrow, if they have money, they should look for other investment in rather than cocoa. Last of it all, okay. uh, you start. You remember when government was bringing the E-Levy? Number one argument that kind of convinced some of us was that if E-Levy comes, in the year 2006, government was going to introduce the communication service tax. There was a lot of controversy in Bruha and got President Kofor then convinced Ghanaian that, oh, it will be used to help in youth employment and people became convinced. At the tail end of the debacle on this uh, year levy, one thing that convinced most people was that, oh, year levy will be used for youth stats, meaning that it will promote youth entrepreneurship. Calf, if you go to Singapore today, the population is not more than 7 million. They have 150 millionaires in Singapore, about over 30 billionaires in Singapore alone. The way they went was through youth entrepreneurship. So it was a state-sponsored entrepreneurship. Same way government wanted to adopt the Singapore approach. But for me, let us begin to ask government teaching questions. A year and over now, what has been the impact of the inflow from year levy on the youth tax? How many people have we invested in? Across the length and breadth of the system region, how many can we count on? And Kaf, if we can succeed in this youth tax, we are building the next Singapore in Africa here in Ghana. Thank you so much for those rants on you start cocoa bills and COVID Auditor General COVID and Auditor General reports. Um, if you haven't taken our your, our number down, please grab your phone and 055-556-1034 for your response to anything you've heard. Dr. Jane, what's your rant? Well, before I go to my rant, you see, I've also gone through the report. Fortunately, I've not printed it out. <laughs> I tried to print it in my mind. <laughs> the most salient point. You see, this issue about 81 million that uh, Bernard mentioned is true. Because uh, you don't sign a contract, expect the other party to deliver, and then the, party, the other party does not deliver. Maybe there could be other reasons. Mm. But we have to make it very clear. This is not money that has been, mis that has been misappropriated or stolen or whatever. It's just that the other party has failed to deliver. So I would urge government that whatever the situation is, that is, that is a huge chance of money. So answer. we should be able to, comp to, uh, to legally compel the other party to fulfill his contractual obligations under the contract. Because it's a contract for you to supply me X amount of goods for which I've paid. So for whatever reason, if you are not paying, uh, I should be able to uh, compel you to fulfill your part of the contract. So I think government should look at that. And uh, my rant are just two. First one is the monetization of our democracy. You know, in every democracy, you cannot rule, rule out the role of money. But when money becomes the yardstick, through which we elect people, through which people can compete in the political space. It means we've sold it to the highest bidder. I'm saying so in view of the fact that very soon we'll be, the two parties will be going for their primaries and then their presidential primaries. Mm -hmm. And from our constitution, that our, the internal organization of, of our political parties must reflect certain democratic principles and practices. To it? To it. So if you have a party that tells its potential candidate yes. that before you can compete as a presidential candidate, pay a whooping 500,000. Half a million cities. Half a million cities. Mm. 
and also pay thirty thousand just for the paper. I think expensive paper. I think we are commercializing the political process in this country because by so doing, you are excluding other potential candidates who have the competence, the knowledge, the expertise, and then the experience, and most of the integrity and the honesty to leave to leave this country. But because of this monetary consideration, they've been left out. So my appeal to both parties is that let make the playing field even. Five hundred thousand so, is the NDC's amount. Is the NDC's what amount? Is the, I'm coming what is, there. What is the MPP's amount? They have not yet come out. So mm -hmm. I'm just advising Ghanaians and then cautioning the political party. Don't let comment. Don't let us commercialize the political process. And I'm getting worried because looking at the NDC as a democrat, social democratic party mm -hmm. with socialist orientation, mm -hmm. with a revolutionary background, who this a party that is supposed to be standing up for the ordinary people. Mm -hmm. But if they decide to put the filing fee at 500,000, then I begin to question their real uh, intentions as a social democratic party. The, the, is, is, the, the, is, the, the, is the intention to exclude certain people mm. or to limit the amount of people who can contest? If that is the case, I think the intent will be defeated. Because I know Dr. Kwabra Dufour can raise 500,000. Mm -hmm. And I'm also informed that Kojo Bonsu can also rate 500,000. Mm -hmm. But that is not the point. The point is, must we come to this point? So if you're an ordinary person like me, you have all the best ideas, but you don't have this money to invest into this project, it means uh, you are left out. We are not being democratic. We are commercializing the entire political process, and then we've made it a game for the people who can afford that money. What would be your suggestion? What this is a political a, what, party. What would be a good number? For no, you? no, no. The good number, maybe 50,000. Even that one, people can't afford it. No, no. At 50,000, I think it's quite, in my estimation, it's reasonable. But to put it at 500,000, especially at this time, when everybody's crying that Ghana is difficult, we have challenges. Unless, of course, you are targeting the super rich who can afford some of these uh, outrageous and exorbitant amounts to pay just to become a presidential candidate. Could it be some kind of low-key fundraiser? Because if Mr. Kojo Bonsu, whose billboards I've seen all over town, if Dr. Dufour and Mr. Mahama all decide to file, mm -hmm. that's uh, 1.5 million Ghana cities plus 30,000 for the paper, mm -hmm. almost 1.6 million. Is it some kind of way of generating funds well, the parties, without justifying it? No, no, the it? parties can find various and innovative means of generating funds. But if you want, I see it as an, as an impediment mm. to eliminate certain people in the political process. So I think the parties might not give the impression that if you are not super rich, you cannot get to a certain level mm. in this country. We are sending the wrong signal. Okay, so that's monetization of politics. Monetization of What's politics. Second rant? And my second rant is uh, certain statements. I've been monitoring the media space. You know, mm -hmm. I did political reporting. Mm -hmm. So anything about politics, I take a lot of interest. I've been monitoring the pronouncements by certain people from both sides of the political debate, and I get, I get very uncomfortable with certain statements coming from certain people, mainly geared towards ethnocentric politics, which I think is dangerous. Because if you go back to history, it is this same ethnocentric politics that was employed by Joseph Goebbels, the propaganda secretary for, for Hitler. Mm -hmm. You know, he started, you know, the Jews, they control about 80% of all the bakeries in Germany. So one day, if they decide to poison us, what is going to happen to us? That was the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then roll forward. You go to Rwanda, before their crisis, some radio stations intentionally incited one group against the other, the Tutsis against the Hutus. I was very fortunate to visit Rwanda in 2015. I went there for a PGR conference. A PGR conference is a graduate conference you do at the PhD level mm. because you are required to attend these conferences, present a paper, and then uh, you participate in whatever discussion. So I had a chance to attend. And after the conference, we were sent to the uh, Genocide Museum, Kafui. 
if you get there, if you get there, you would know how uh, wicked fellow human beings can be towards their fellow human beings. So I think as media practitioners, social commentators, panelists or whatever on any platform, we must be mindful of our utterances. We must be mindful of our utterances because at the end of the day, we can disagree. That's the essence of democracy. We can disagree and agree. But our disagreement should not descend into chaos or anarchy. Mm -hmm. And remember, some of these statements that a lot of people have been, some people have been making for the past two weeks, some of them are not even aware that it's criminal. Inciting ethnic hatred or violence mm -hmm. is a criminal offense under our laws. Apart from that, if you go to the realm of international law, now there's a legal principle that anybody who incites ethnic hatred, you can be charged and tried by the International, international Criminal Court. This is what happened to the, uh, the Rwandan nationals who were inciting hatred. Three of them were cited by the International Court in Arusha, Tanzania. The International Criminal Court for Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And the first one, John Bosco, he got 27 years. And the rest who escaped to Belgium, Canada, and then uh, 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 France, the one in Canada, he got 12 years, just last two years. The one in Belgium, he got 25 years for inciting ethnic hatred using his radio station and their newspapers. So we should not think that we can just say anything and get away with it. First and foremost, it is a criminal offense in Ghana. And if you go to the international level, it is, there's a jurisprudence. Even if you escape from Ghana and you run to Europe or whatever, the international system will catch up with you. This is the only country we have. We must not destroy it in the name of politics. Because Kafui, I've worked very hard outside. And I've put up a structure in my village where I want to retire to. In peace. Enjoy the rest of my life before my ancestors call me. I don't want this country to be plunged into anarchy. And please, fellow Ghanaians, the election is just about uh, expressing our pro political preferences. That's all. And then we are going to judge the political parties based on their records. Fortunately, the two parties, MPP and NDC, they've all been in government before. So we are going to interrogate their record. Agreg, what have you done? Health, what have you done? What Education, are, what, are you doing what have about you this? done? What are you doing about this? In, in terms of the economy, what have you done? Galance, what have you done? Galance, done? <laughs> so we are going to judge these two political parties based on their past record because we cannot believe their promises. I can tell you, Kafui, somebody can sit here and promise me that, oh, if we win, we can bring the sea from Accra to Bamboy. Okay, Tampo. They can make all manner of promises. Ghanaians have, have moved beyond that. We are going to look at every party based on its record. So finding ethnocentric sentiment will rather be counterproductive to any political party or individual who wants to play on our sentiment, tribal sentiment. So please, let us be mindful of what we say, cautious of what we say, because at the end of the day, we have one Ghana. That's it. That is it. So thank you. You are welcome, sir. Danke schon. Danke schon. <laughs> <laughs> so ethnocentrism, so tribal politics. Let's break it down. I mean, I like to break this down. People may not know what we're talking about. Ethnocentric tribal politics. You vote for somebody because he comes from your village, or you, you say things about somebody because he comes from a different part of the country. Yeah. So tribal politics, monetization of, of politics, high filing fees to be precise. 500,000 CDs, Dr. Junior thinks it's excessive. What do you think? Uh, you start has, E-Levy was meant to boost You start uh, on the Singaporean model. Has it been successful? Bernard thinks not. Uh, issues of cocoa bills that have been rolled all over without the attention of those who put their money there in the cocoa bills. And then the issue of the uh, Auditor General's report. A hundred and how many pages? 119. 119 pages. The man printed it and read it and gave us just extracts. We'd love to know your thoughts, 055-556-1034. Something Those quick. Are the, yes, quickly, one minute. On the commercialization of political office holding, I think that we need to push hard on state funding politicians. I am a strong believer in that because you see, Kav, uh, money doesn't give birth to vision, vision gives birth to money. So if we can get a lot more visionary people in the political space, they can create an avenue for people to make money easily. 
In as much as I have concerns about the limit of how much people should file to be in parliament or to serve as presidential candidate, I think that one key quality of a great political leader is your resourcefulness, your ability for people to believe in your vision. The political party has pegged it with 500,000. But I can tell you, if you are somebody who carries a great vision and you are admired by many people, you might not have in your vote, in your bank account, 500,000 Ghana CD now. But once you have a certain vision that is very stimulating, it will entice people to say that, okay, we want Carl to be the leader of LMG. Mm -hmm. Carl, take a million dollars, go and canvas for votes. Until we get to that level, let mm -hmm. us prioritize state funding political activity. And when we do that, we can get meritorious people to be in the political space other than people who are just square pegs in a round hole moving around. Okay. Okay. My counter argument is that, you see, there's no free lunch. The person giving you the one million cities is not giving you for free. There are conditions attached to it. That is the beginning of corruption. My candid opinion. Nobody will give you one million cities just because he thinks that you are you are a very handsome man. Oh, dog, because you speak good English, you teach at Gimpa. Come and take one million cities. He has something at the back of his mind. Not there's, all of them. There's no free lunch in our part of the world, and that is the beginning of corruption. Somebody who gives you hundred million. He comes, uh, uh, one million, he comes and he wants a contract. You'll be forced to do so sorting. This is where we are today. So, to me, we should have a cap. Okay. And the political parties, they should be considerate enough. Not all their members can commandeer a lot of support to be able to raise 500,000. So 50K is good for you? Uh, to me, 50,000. Mm. And parliamentary, it should not be more than 10,000. Because the person is out to serve his people. Mm. If he doesn't have 10,000, are you forced him to go and take a loan for 10,000? How is he going to recoup the 10,000? The money that you give, it to him, you give to him to go and construct the road from Kintampo to Bole, or Bamboe to Kintampo to Bole, Bamboe, he will take his share before he, he will take the 10,000 that you charge. He will take it before <laughs> he goes to... But, but dog, that, you, know, that you know the Iron Lady <laughs> Margaret Thatcher said, that we've not had a chance to taste all forms of government. Democracy, though expensive, is the best. All right. Then. It is the most expensive if you really want to practice democracy. Okay. Then let's go for another form of government. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not kicking against democracy, yes, but, but the, way, the fees, the fees no, no, the monetization and much. the commercialization of democracy. But I know is the, what it's expensive in America and UK even no, more no, than here. No, it's expensive, but they live in a just, uh, uh, their, their environment, environment is different. Right. So they so, live, in, they operate within a, a, a different context. All right, we'll hear what our, leader, our viewers have to say about this. It's a very interesting conversation, <laughs> and I'm enjoying <laughs> it. It's uh, eight oh six. This is GTV Breakfast. My name is Kafu uh, and Bernard and Kweku, Bernard Odotechi and Dr. Kweku, um, and I need. Jinde, is that correct? Jinde. Yes. It's a compound name. Yes, indeed. You, yes. you mentioned Anna Nindi. Anna Nindi. And what's the yes. English name? Yes, it's James. <laughs> <laughs> just like my name is Robert. Somebody said the only bond we know in Ghana is James Bond. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what, what, what's in the other, the, 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 the other headlines making news today. Daily graphic insurance success of debt exchange program. Engagement corporation way to go, says the Attorney General. There's a debt exchange conversation after headlines today. So you stick around for that. Ghanaian Times, child streetism suit. Charles writes... And the uh, Attorney General clash at Supreme Court. Ex GFA boss Alaji Jawula lay to rest. May he rest in perfect, perfect peace. Students of Krobia Santi Technical and Vocational School run amok, vandalizing property. Tax Appeals Board urged to apply alternative dispute resolution mechanism. And I will cause upset in MPP presidential primary, says Kennedy Ajipong. Observer, Baumia charges judges, exercise your duties with fairness and expedition, and customs vows to beat 33.5 billion CDs revenue target. So some students have gone amok again, uh, uh, misbehaving, and this is in today's Ghanaian Times. And what did they do? Why, why were they jumping up and down? So this is, they actually turned, overturned a vehicle. Group of students from Akrobia Santi Technical Vocational School, I blame Alan again, Vocational School at Asakore in the Setre East District on Sunday ran amok, vandalized property uh, worth thousands of Ghana CDs. They accused the school authorities of being responsible for poor examination results of their predecessors. I mean, this is so illogical. <laughs> it's just madness. This is a car that they turned over. So how, you are blaming uh, teachers for the poor examination results of your predecessors. They write NVTI uh, certificate to and uh, National Business and Technical Examinations Board certificates. It's not clear which of the results the students were referring to. Um, <laughs> the rapaging students, most of them girls. Wow. 
have been asked to go home at a further notice. Six cars have been destroyed by the students, four of them belonging to the school, two private ones belonging to teachers. They also destroyed the bungalow for the senior housemistress, her car, the school's notice board, stores, and food stored there. So your violence will prevent people from eating. What is wrong with these people? Mr. Opoku says security personnel um, protected the principal's room from being damaged, but the principal's vehicle was destroyed. Mr. Opoku is the assembly member for Ifugia South Electoral Area. So uh, the uh, uh, educational, regional education director, together with the district director of education, have uh, visited the school to assess the situation. Some of the male students have been arrested by the police for questioning. Mm -hmm. uh, this school uh, was established in the year 1999 by Nana Susubibri Krobia Santi, mm. the Omahini of the Asokori traditional area, a very noble man. Yeah. Nana <laughs> Dr. SKB Asante yeah. has his name on this school. If I were to advise the venerable Nana, I would ask him to take his name off. This is just madness. Look at the pictures. Look at the pictures. So they overturned cars, they destroyed home, houses, uh, rooms, and their, their, their reason is that they are accusing the school authorities of being responsible for poor examination results of their predecessors. As a former teacher, how does this make you feel? No, I'm still a teacher. Ah, you know, still a teacher. Still a teacher. <laughs> I, I still teach. Yeah, yeah, still a teacher. I still you see, sometimes here. students don't want to work for their results. And sometimes I blame parents. In the final examinations, BC, for instance, you see parents trying to get support for their children. You are, sending, they are, you are sending the wrong signal. Students don't want to work, but they want to get good results. There's no free lunch. There's no magic. You cannot pray to pass your exam. You only have to work and pass your exam. And uh, I think the reason they are giving, are you blaming the schools it's for madness. the poor results? It's madness. I mean, I can't get their logic and their reasoning. I think they need to go for psychological uh, testing. Can we, in my candid opinion, they should arrest most of them, <laughs> charge them for criminal damage to public property, and then at the end of the day, they should say charge them. And no more mercy from the president because no, no, people no, no, will no. start appealing, sending no, 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 videos. No, 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 I can no. see videos coming up pretty soon. No, we are no, sorry. No, no. We didn't know I mean, what we are I mean, doing. I mean, it was the pretty It was most a spontaneous reaction. I mean, how can we allow this thing in, in our country? What sort of future, what sort of message are we sending? That you can do anything, destroy government property, public property, pay for with my taxes, and you can get away free. No punishment. No sanctions. Mm. You must teach our people to be responsible. If you have any problem at all, that is not the way to go about resolving that problem. You think going to burn those cars is going to be the answer to your, pe the, the, your, your poor performance? No, that's not the answer. So I think uh, we must crack the whip. We've been too lenient in this country. There must be order in this country. If not, this country has no future. These are the future leaders. Mm -hmm. People who want to be leaders in the future. But please, you can't be a future leader with this sort of attitude. And I always tell uh, the young people, tomorrow is for those who prepare themselves today. You get education, you build a good character, a person of integrity, then you can become a leader. Without that, you have no future. Before we, re we, we end, I'll read uh, <coughs> the last words of Togbe Sri, the first, mm -hmm. who was the first uh, paramount chief of the, of the Anglo state, and he spoke directly to the children and the things that you said 500, 600 years ago. I'll read that to you before we go. Bernard, uh, what's up? Mm -hmm. My father left me one thing when I started, when I was going to the SS. He said that always go to God when you have done your part. Always go to God when you have done your part. Because there are over 8 billion people in the world today. You cannot tell me that God loves Ghanaians more than the rest of the people in the world. And this too much uh, Godism. Godism <laughs> people thinking that, oh, instead of sitting down to learn, let's go to prayer center. It doesn't work. <laughs> I never believe in past questions. No. I never. In my school days, those who know me back in SS know. Look, I'll read everything. If it drops, it drops. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You see, I don't support vandalism. But vandalism is our way of life in common words. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the irony. Mm -hmm. You know, so when people do this and they kind of associate this kind of style to vandals who are fighting today to protect their culture, which mm. I'll come to. Mm. For me, I want to associate myself with a daughter's position that uh, we need to let the law work. 
That is why I think that we have to take criminal matters serious. Let us identify the real people in this. Mm. Because you see, we are looking at future leaders. And these are the leaders who end up becoming the MCDC, MPs, ministers in the country for the next 10, 20, 30 years to come. If there is a approach to go, then it's very unconscionable, it's unacceptable. But whereby we must also not allow the law to work, that is why I have a bone of content. That is why that on this platform, Vandas have been very appreciative of what GBC Briefer Show has done. You gave us the platform to articulate our concerns. And I'm no, I know that the president of Ghana is making an attempt to resolve the issue. But for this issue at the senior high school level, let us penalize them. Mm. Last week, our defense of the China A student. But today, I will not be. I will not be because uh, properties are involved. In human life, are also involved. And you see, in some of these schools, if you are, you are a head teacher, you are not careful, you lose your life. So one, let the disciplinary committee of this respective institution begin to work. And when they come to a final conclusion of certain punitive mechanism, we must take away the Godfather, Jaimen <laughs> And it will shock you that when the school and GS come out with sanctions against this case, you will see the men in castle who will line up with apology. And that is why Ghana... And the men in cloth. The men in cloth. The cloth and the castle. The men in cloth and the men in castle. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Kaf, in ending on this, yeah. let me, through this platform, make a personal appeal to the president of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Students of Commonwealth and Old Vandas are begging the president that we want to protect our culture. And what is happening on Legon campus might have national security implication. Let them speak to the Vice Chancellor of University What's of Ghana and let her appreciate that Commonwealth and its over 60 years culture must be allowed to stand. If there are excesses, let us put in place some kind of stringent mechanism to restore sanity. But to collapse over 60 years tradition because of the deviancy of people, people in my candy view, calf, I don't subscribe to that. Vandalism is a religion to some of us, and we feel so proud that we are a product of such a religion and such a course of life. All right. In line with this particular story, we want to speak with, uh, um, uh, well, with Mr. Bright, a peer executive director, Child Rights International. Um, this is on a different, well, it's also to do with children, but it has to do with child streetism. So there's a, a, a headline with him and the Attorney General, they clashed in court over a particular issue. Bright, good morning, welcome to the show. Hello, Mr. Bright Apia, how are you doing? I'm very well, and how are you doing? I'm very, very fine, thank you. Uh, before I even, we even speak about the child rights issue, uh, child streetism issue, I wonder whether you're following the case of this, uh, these students who vandalized property at the Krobe Asante Tech uh, Vocational School in the Asante region. Yes, uh, we got the news uh, last night. Okay. Um, so, do you know where the, the, the investigation is as far as uh, that particular, particular school is concerned? Where, where they, what, what, what's, what's up right now with that particular case? Well, I'm told the, the authorities are investigating it, mm -hmm. and uh, we are clearly following uh, the outcome. Okay. Uh, we feel that, in our opinion, uh, the law gives uh, responsibility to children to participate in certain things. Mm -hmm. So if their conduct is not in line with what has been provided for in law, then of course the law should also take its course. Because okay. at the age of 12, the law says that a child can be criminally responsible for their conduct. All right. So if they have conducted themselves in a way that goes contrary to the provisions of the law, and then also against the, the rules of, of the school, then proper system must be established to uh, deal with that. And those who participated, a due process must be followed uh, so that if there are issues with them, we can specifically deal with those issues around them and those who have also criminally committed offense. Okay. And they, are, uh, they would also be taken to the due process. Awesome. Okay, so now to the, the issue. You, you, you have filed some issues at the Supreme Court. Um, what exactly do you want the esteemed judges to, to, to grant you? Well, uh, this is a case that we found, uh, I think, last year or so. And uh, we've been going to court, and uh, the Supreme Court has instructed the parties involved to 
file a joint suit, which we did. So basically, uh, we are seeking some interpretation to the state of our children on the street and what we need to do as a nation uh, to get them off the street. So uh, basically, it is an issue of interpretation and declaration that we are seeking from uh, the, the court. And uh, you know that matters of this nature are evident before the court. It's a bit difficult to discuss the details. Yeah, so basically, that is what um, we are we are seeking that the court needs to uh, give us some hearing in terms of what we need to do for our children who are on the street. So, what is your case that the government is is willfully allowing children to be on the streets and should take stiffer action? Is that is that your case summarized? Yeah, basically, uh, the the responsibility of providing care for children, especially. Children who are vulnerable is the responsibility of the state. So, if we have enacted law that prohibits the engagement of children on the street, and they are there, then it suggests that uh, institutions that are mandated to do that are not doing what is expected of them. Mm. And we have also prescribed a certain uh, uh, program that we want our children to go to to be upright in society. And if they are on the street, then it means that. Those programs, such children are not benefiting from such uh, programs that we have. Therefore, what do we need to do as a nation to make sure that if you are a child, you are guaranteed a universal right? What then do we do to ensure that that enjoyment, the enjoyment of that right, uh, lives within a certain program that will be beneficial to you? And if you also look at our Children's Act, it says that in all matters, the, the best interest of the child should be paramount. So, in pursuit of that provision, then it means that any other thing must work in favor of children. So, if there are children on the street and they are not having access to education, and the constitution says that every child must have a right, every child has a right to education, then it means that it's time to reason that we need to probably investigate what exactly is happening to our children right. and why they are on the street and why they are not in school, rather. So, once we are able to diagnose the issue, uh, we think that with the, with the intervention of the court, we should be able to have a proper system that will help us to redefine the concept of social welfare right. in this country, especially when it comes to the welfare of children. Um, conservatively, how many kids are on the streets in Ghana? Well, uh, it's a bit difficult to uh, put a figure on it because of the retention levels, because... Today, you, you get a child on the street. Tomorrow, the child is no longer, and you are unable to trace the whereabouts of the child. So what what the reason that we did is to look at certain uh, vantage places that these children stand to, to do that. And we realized that in the past the three years that we did the reason, we realized that if you pick any major traffic light, in our cities, like uh, Takrade, Greater Accra, Kumasi, and Tamale, you have an average of five to seven children uh, at a particular uh, busy traffic area begging. Okay. All right. Um, wish you the best with this particular court case, and uh, we'll check in on you to see how things are going. Thank you. Right. Up here is the Executive Director for the Child's Rights International looking at uh, protecting the children on the streets. Uh, streetism is now something, uh, one of the isms and schisms that Bob Marley was fighting against. Uh, we want to deal with it. Um, uh, Proto. Okay, so messages coming in 055-556-1034. A couple of messages here. Good morning, BFS. Audit reports the findings of the Auditor General to a recipient, which is to the government for his study and implementation. Such reports will be interrogated and necessary queries raised for appropriate responses. We can follow up on it, it as corporates instead of raising the alarm and crying foul. Uh, um, I don't quite get you, what you're saying, but hey, thanks for your message. These students should be made to face the law. Uh, no pardon for anyone who should be made a scapegoat. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, CAF and panelists. I blatantly disagree with doctor on the payment of filing fees because when the fees are cheap, all sorts of people will contest. <laughs> and there will no sanity in the process, Roland, now. Nah. So it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of a, you're trying to chuck people or booger people out of the system with high fees. Kaf, kudos to you and your Monday morning panel. Dr. Anna is always on point. I love how he brought Hitler's evil political strategy to light. Lawyer journalists of the show, my standing about the NDC political party, 500,000 CD Ghana fees payment is that they need money to fund the party operations. Bernard, did you speak to all bank managers in Ghana 
to their views about the finance minister's haircuts. <laughs> he, he, doesn't, he can't speak to all the no, no, no. oh, park <laughs> managers, please. I'm glad you why. <laughs> Good morning, BFS. Alternative government for Ghana. This is what we want, says Vincent Dodu. The students must be dealt with. They must be used to set an example to deter others from going down the same route. But you see, because we pardoned the Chiana girls, these people, too, when they come out, they will be expecting a pardon. No, so. Calf, read the, <laughs> read the first interesting uh, comment. Calf, good morning, Calf, and your team, and your parents. BOT, for you, I admire. He can be very objective when he wants to, and very mischievous when he decides to. <laughs> Please, Calf, with what doctor is saying about tribal statements, Demi, so those should not be invited today because of what he said about Asante and Gans. Anyway, Calf, good morning again, uh, and have a great day. Hope I'm not the only one realizing corruption and borrowing in this ruling government is too outrageous. The Auditor General's report on COVID-19 expenditure just explained that COVID was financial bonanza for the ruling government, aside of it being an emergency, emergency case. Go ahead, GTV. Dr. Jean Day is making sense in his submissions. And you think BOT is not being truthful to the issue of the filing fee. Ask him if he's the one of those contesting. Can he afford such an outrageous amount just to be a presidential mm -hmm. aspirant? I was expecting BOT to condemn his party for his outrageous filing fees. Really? <laughs> really? You don't understand human beings, though. <laughs> you can't tell them. Calf, you look good in that dress. Who did it for you? Uh, hmm, I remember him. Jamara. Jamara. I look for him on Instagram. Jamara Fashions. How and how, why do you charge a candidate 5 billion CDs to call him? It's not 5 billion. Please don't be mischievous. It's 500,000 Ghana CDs. And listen, the fact that you cannot afford something doesn't mean other people can't afford it. Okay? Yeah. You always remember that. What is high for you is small for somebody. That's how the fingers are not equal. Okay? So, yeah. <laughs> Good morning to you and the panel. We should condemn ethnocentric politics, but I don't want all these people started this and that and that. Please. We're not fighting here. We're talking about issues. Minister of Information, are they health personnel? Even health personnel couldn't get COVID allowance. Some leaders are just greedy in this country. All right. Good morning, GTV. Breakfast. Marty, since when did you become a prophetess? IGP will come for you. <laughs> If Elev is not a year old, year old yet, or Bernard, AG's report, can't we chase the money cited in the report and leave the individual bondholders? <laughs> Come on, GTV Ghana. My problem is the constant silence government and forestry commission have decided to show on the plight of the youth in afforestation. So it's silence. They are owed 10 months uh, allowance. From Grace Asiedu prisons. Really? Please, Bernard, keep the good work for all of us. Uh, if all of us will stop talking and bring facts, they are good to help the country. The country is very good. For, I admire your effort. The man spends a lot in, in photocopying documents to bring them for our edification. So thanks a lot. Dr. Jinde, beyond the filing fee, the candidate also raises budgets for handling delegates. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hello, Kath. <laughs> which side can I, on which side can I get the auditor's report, uh, general's report? Which, which side can I get? Auditor general's site. Auditor general's website. website. So, so type Ghana so. Auditor General. Yeah, you will see the site. Uh, you think no amount of NDC propaganda will, will disrupt the massive infrastructure development, says Eric Bwedi. Okay, thank you. Hello, Kaf, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Imagine, just imagine Ghana reviving Ghana Airways, serving Eku juice, special ice mineral water, mm. adding crab mm. pie, watching mm. with paddy rice. Imagine, just imagine the amount of jobs it will create and the amount of money the country will sure. rake in. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Alaji Haruna Ashaiman. NDC should start taking inventory of all the money accrued by the NFP government and make sure it's all accounted for and retrieve every peso. Good morning. Uh, he says, uh, MPP must sow a seed called Dr. Okotu Afriye for them to reap a fruit of victory. Ayo. Aaron Babaku Mensa, you think inflation is too high, price of essential goods is high in the market, misappropriation of COVID funds are uh, issues that are still with us and they need to go. Now we have started this butter trading system. It will be more sustainable if we rather use some of our crude oil to get finished products. Gold for oil system is not sustainable. Musa Abatoa, Current economic crisis and issues surrounding it is not incompetence, but shared wickedness. Ghana is being governed on the family ideology, okay? Check the picture. What picture is this? I'm a teacher in Chechebia, Senior Konongo. A woman opposite our school swept her house this morning and dumped it on our compound, telling her it was blown by the winds from the trees in the school. So it belongs <laughs> to the president, Akufuado. So we should go and call the president to come and sweep. She's insulting us and the president here and there. Oh, Charlie, you're bringing your, your issues to national television like that. So the woman, so she, she's calling the president to come and take this away. The woman, on board, dear crown. She needs the respect. Uh, <laughs> Abigail, thank you so much for your messages. Uh, before we go, um, I just want to just throw back into history because today is the 23rd of January. Sure. And today is exactly 25 years mm -hmm. since our former president, Dr. Hila Liman, passed on. Um, your quick thoughts on that, Dr. Jinde? Well, I think uh, Ghanaians generally will not be fair to 
Dr. Liman. Apart from the university that was named after him, I think uh, nobody is even talking about it. There's no, um, most unfortunately, there's even no press statement from his own party. The PNC. They trace their route to, uh, uh, to PMP. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, I think the media and everybody we think we have forgotten Dr. Hilary Liman. But the fact remains that he was a former president of this country. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a chance of meeting him because my brother, Mr. J.C. Nandoma, was the constituency organizer for PNP mm -hmm. in Wenchi East. Mm -hmm. So one time he was traveling from Accra to Golu, his hometown, so he stopped over. Mm -hmm to see my brother and that was the first time I met a president in my life. Wow. So I had a personal, a personal encounter the with The first him. president you've met? The first president I've ever met in mm -hmm. my life. And I think up to now he's the only president I've met personally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what, what were your impressions when you met no, him? No, no, I mean, he's, he, he, you know, he was, Liman was a diplomat. So his demeanor was that calm, uh, soft-spoken, affable gentleman. But it's unfortunate that after his demise, his own party has forgotten. Mm -hmm to even uh, bring out a press statement to tell us that this was uh, 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 a president who led their party. It's unfortunate. They are very busy fighting among themselves. I think... Uh, this is the convention done... people, the, the Nkrumah's party. The, 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 uh, PNC, mm -hmm. People National Convention, mm -hmm. they are the direct output of uh, 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 P, uh, PMP, mm -hmm. the man's party. Mm -hmm. So we're expecting them to come out with at least a press statement to remind all of us. But it is not only the duty of the party, but it is the duty of the whole country. A former president, today he's, uh, he died about 25 years ago, mm -hmm. and there's nothing, there's exactly. no news item, no news story. Nobody's talking about him. It is unfortunate. We are talking about it here. That's why we are Ghana Television. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. You've done well. Thank you so much. May his soul rest in peace. In perfect, perfect peace. Bernard, what are your thoughts? Uh, uh, I did peace science in my first year university of Ghana, mm -hmm. and I think second year I just abandoned the course to move on to major in linguistics. Kaf, you realize that uh, late President Liman yeah. is a product of political divisiveness that erupted in the PFP versus the United National Convention. You know, when the split uh, erupted between Pauli and Victor Wusu, who yes. couldn't unite in the 1979 election? then that gave that kind of luck to late President Liman to later on become the president of Ghana. And you also realize that under the Third Republic of Ghana, this is the only president whose budget was unanimously rejected by his own members of parliament and his, because he practiced the strictest form of the presidential system of government that ministers were not part of parliament. Mm -hmm. So there is a man that we should celebrate more. Mm -hmm. Because if you take Ghana today, we've never had an instance whereby the budget statement of a president of a president was rejected by his own party. His own party. Mm. This time, not even the opposition. Mm. So his bad. own party people felt that there were certain things in the budget they were not comfortable of. And then also, they also felt that because the ministers were not part of parliament, they were becoming too boisterous and more like they were too arrogant. Yeah. So parliament at that time felt the need to punish the Liman government for the arrogance of his ministers. Yeah. The point is this. His own political party, whether it is the PMP or the PNC, PNC that came from the PMP, they should celebrate him. All right. Because if you don't celebrate your daughter more enough, you don't expect an outsider to do so. And on that celebratory note, let's go on the line right now and speak to the coordinator of the Hila Leman Foundation and also a daughter of uh, President uh, Dr. Hila Leman. Zilla, good morning and welcome to GTV Breakfast. Hi, morning. Hi, Kavi. How are you? I'm very, very well. So today is 25 years since your father uh, passed on. Passed on. You yes. must have been a little girl back then. Yes. Oh, well, not that little. I was in Achimota. Okay. <laughs> so I wasn't that little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, are, what are some of the memories you had of, or have of that, that time? Of the day of yes. his passing or yes. of him in yes. general? Yes, the day of his passing and then of him later on, yeah. Okay, so it was actually, hmm, I don't know, it was a very emotional moment because I was in school at Chimota, boarding, Makati out. I didn't know my dad was ill. He had been ill, but nothing serious. And I didn't know he had taken ill and was in the hospital. Nobody told him because I was in school. And so when it happened, obviously it was on the news. And obviously some of my friends had already heard about it and I had it. 
Wow. And if you know me, you know I'm a very bubbly person, always, you know. So later on, people will tell me that, hey, they thought I knew and I was so strong, you know. And, I mean, eventually, one of my best friends had to break the news to me, and I was so confused. Like, I, I thought it was a joke. I really, really thought it was a joke, you know. But, hey, life happens, and it wasn't. And um, next thing, I went home, and that was the era of doom. So I remember the night I got home, the house was full, the lights were off. You know, I went to look for my mom. It was just my mom and my younger sister, Salma. So, and my older sister, Sister Larva, she was around. The house was full, and, and that is when it really hit me that it is true. Because right up to this point, I was hoping that it's a lie, because I didn't know he was ill. Mm -hmm. You know, it was actually very emotional. And um, I guess it's part of the journey of life to help you grow and to live with what is to come inevitably in all of us, our lives. We know him as a, a, a former diplomat, a statesman, former president, but what, what was he was daddy to you. I mean, what was he like as a, as a father or a husband? So to us, or to me, he was simply that. And, um, you know, we are seven. So we, we come from a large family, seven siblings. And our oldest sister is four, which is in her 60s. And then we, Salma and I, are the youngest, and we are in our 40s. So the the data they knew was totally different from the data we knew. The data we knew, we they always would say that we were the data bars like my dad had, you know, as age would you know, deal with you, had cooled down and was more, you know, I don't know, almost like grandfather status. So we just knew him as Dada growing up, seeing him in the house every day, our home teacher, our tutor, our poet. Our everything. We used to go for walks with him every single day. It was it was just purely um, a father and daughter, and a father and daughters affair. We didn't know him in the political life. We didn't know anything about all of those. No, we only saw a little bit of that when, in 1992, he decided to delve back into politics, and then suddenly we were seeing or beginning to know another aspect of him that we, we entirely never knew about because that's not how we were raised. Mm. Did he pass on some of the French skills to you? No. So you see, he didn't. So actually, of course, you know, at that time, uh, and even still, we, we do French in school. Mm -hmm. So he didn't purposely or forcefully impart the French up on, onto us. And I actually think maybe he probably should have, you know. But somehow, we just did very well in French in class or in school because we always had him as our tutor at home. So, you know, there's this story I'd always tell my friend's teacher then, anytime or once in a while, when there was a very ambiguous question where she wasn't sure what the answer was, you know, she would actually ask me, Zilla, what did your father say? <laughs> so whatever my dad said in my book, in my homework, was what we went through, you know. <laughs> That's really, really, really interesting. And so now that we are, we are it's 25 years on, uh, mm -hmm. What do you think of how Ghana has treated your father? <laughs> well, um, this is a very interesting question. The question that comes all the time. We would want to say um, not appropriately, but another side of me and the way I was brought up, you know, would not want to cry over spilled milk. Mm -hmm. Yes, he wasn't treated properly. Yes, he wasn't given his due. Yes, everything about, you know, his, um, um, the coup and everything was so uncalled for and the hardships thereafter, you know. But um, I guess our upbringing, and even him, he never held anything against anyone. So growing up, we were not, we didn't grow up with some kind of hatred or some kind of dislike. No, not at all. He was never that kind of person, you know, to harbor hate or to harbor regret or to harbor any... No, he wasn't that kind of person. And he did not impart that in us in any way. But if you look at it on the grand scheme, yes, a great disservice was done. You know, when I was little, all I saw was my dad at home every single day. My mother was literally the breadwinner who is using the tie and die, literally took all of us to school. And we were her workforce. 
seven children and cousins in the house. That's a lot of people to be workforce, you know. And that is the life we knew. Mm. And there was a time as I grew older and I began to understand. I thought my friends and dads are going to work everywhere together. And then I asked, I asked my dad, I remember asking him, I was like, Dada, how come you don't go to work like everybody else? Why are you like always here and teaching us and blah, blah, blah? And he just said to me, for me to understand with my simple mind at that time, he said, when you attain the highest office in the land, you can't just get up and do any job. Mm. And that's all he said. At this point, I didn't know that yeah, his passport has been confiscated. Everything has been confiscated. He had literally been, it had been made impossible for him to even progress or do anything. And even with this, it's not like the state was looking at that. It wasn't so at all. It wasn't. Even though we spent half of our life trying to explain to people and tell people that, no, the state is not looking for us. And we are li living a life probably more difficult than the average or the, the, the underdog. They just didn't understand. And that's what it was, and that's how we were raised. Do, do you know, before, before I let you go, do you know what he ever, did he ever speak about President Ron, or Chairman Rawlings, the man who overthrew no, his government? He, he never spoke about him? Just not to us, we the younger one. I don't know about my older siblings, but to us, never. Even those days when you come on TV, there was, you know how somebody you come see, somebody who pass a remark, a hateful remark, or never, ever did I ever hear anything negative from my dad and even my mom. For that matter, never. Ever. Fi and, and, and finally, on this 25th anniversary of the passing of Dr. Hil Hila Leman, President of Ghana, what is the Hila Leman Foundation doing to remember him? Okay, now I'm asking so you a question as a coordinator of the of the of the foundation and not yeah. his daughter. Yeah. So this year we decided, the family decided to make it a family again. So to stay devoid of, you know, the party, devoid of, if, even the foundation, even though we put on something, but we just decided to make it a family affair where we just all come together, remember this simple man who wrote it to be, you know, to attain the highest position of the land, you know, to be with a mom at this time, and to, um, what's it called, to envision and visualize and vision out the way, the next steps, the way forward, and how to proceed, and how to impact what he imparted in us and the nation as a whole. Zilla, thank you so much for speaking to us, coordinator of the Hila Leman Foundation, Zilla Leman, thank your you. daughter. Thank you, Captain. President Leman. Thank you so much. Um, and by the way, Zilla was one of my neighbors back in, when I was in Teshinungwa. Okay. So I, I had it. You met the, uh, the, 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 father, the, former, yeah. the father, but yeah. I, he was my neighbor. Captain, there was one thing I got from the lady. <laughs> yes. Vengeance is from above. Exactly. There was, there was no ill will. Yeah. All right. Before we go, and Sanyu Jose is in the house, by the way. Sanyu Jose is, is fighting for individual bondholders like me and you to make sure that we don't get haircuts on our money. And he's going to be sitting down with uh, Thelma in a short while. But let me read a couple of messages before we go. So, <laughs> have you paid your TV license? Miyato. <laughs> this is a message on, on, on Facebook. Hey, so Ghanaians decided not to pay and we did not pay. Did you ever pay your TV license? This is coming from Kofi TV. <laughs> and there's a big conversation on TV license right now. What were they showing on GTV for us to pay license fee to watch? And our GTV Ghana admin is one of the fiercest and the most violent. They don't joke. We're showing Johnny to the West, by the fireside, home alone, etc. <laughs> and then Gifty say, <laughs> GTV Ghana, I love your answers. Let us pay to support them. A, the messages are so many, man. Uh, that Charlie, they say the admin is a comrade. But even before they try to resurrect the resurrect, my father was paying it to that man follows the rules of the letter. They should just add the TV license to the E levy. That's a good idea. I think I like that. Add the TV license to the, the E levy. The day we hear they will be coming around to collect license pet, we put the TV under the bed. People used to put the <laughs> You guys are now confessing on Facebook. Hey! Master, 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 there are a lot of interesting movies and documentaries to watch on DSTV, but all our local channels show is room discussing with 90, 90 time, 96 times advert, so I'll pay to sit on Netflix. You're not supporting Ghanaian. Support Ghana. Any short code for payment, please share. Some of us would like to pay. I like this person. He wants a short, we need to put a short code out for payment. See, the guy handling GTV platform is very funny. Journey to the West. Bah. We used to watch it to Shifu and all those guys. Unless we can use the chance to watch football. Imagine GTV Sports Plus wanted to be fair and, you, and the Football Association wanted a corruptible government in which They've diverted the viewership to start times. So how can you fault them? Hmm. We need more of your kind in Ghana. May somebody surprise you with Momo this evening. <laughs> GTV Ghana. So there's a conversation on, on the, the TV license. All right. Uh, <laughs> so it's all there on our Facebook page. So check it out. Go to our Facebook and check it out and you'll see it for yourself. 
Uh, we are done with the messages this morning. Uh, I don't want to go to Facebook, to WhatsApp, but I don't see the WhatsApp messages. And so I think I'll leave it here right now. Yes, WhatsApp, 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 WhatsApp. Quickly, before. Tell Zilla that it should read former president, no, former president. Oh, you always minoring on, majoring on minors, more, more things than the, oh, please. We are celebrating Miliman, lad. Oh. Kaf, it's really sad that even in national monuments, they tried to hide Dr. Hila Liman. Recently, I watched a children's visit to the James Fort on GTV, and all past presidents and our current president's pictures were displayed on the wall, except that of Dr. Hila Liman. He was really a fine diplomat and really humble, just like Ezi Dombo was remembered after many years of forgetting him, was remembered. So would Hila Liman be announced one day. He didn't deserve ill treatment Ghana gave him. He rests in peace, just as he was a man of peace. The, the WA Technical University has been renamed uh, Dr. Hila Liman Technical University. So, yeah, uh, it's there. Thank you so much, people. Um, and more messages for Zilla, but I'm sure we'll read them. We'll pass them on to her. Thank you so much, all of you. Bernard Odrotechi is our certified chartered economist. And Dr. Hila, uh, I said Dr. Hila. But, Kav, you are not pushing the old Vanda appeal to the presidency very hard. Keep pushing. Thank you. We want the tradition to stand. Commerce should remain as it is. If there are SSs, let's finish, maintain the study, then we'll come back home and talk to the case. Thank you for the words so sweet. Uh, I, I love Komo talk too much. Yeah, I know. It's almost like a religion for you. <laughs> Bernard Odotechi, thank you so much. Certified chat Chartered Economist. And our law lecturer, uh, journalist, um, and a lover of Bamboy. Kintampo. And Kintampo. <laughs> Dr. James Kweku and Anijinde. No but double identity. <laughs> the same, gentlemen, thank you so much. The same person. <laughs> yes. If, if, you, if you hold individual bond, if you are an individual bondholder, the next conversation should interest you. Senor Hosi is the convener of the